A normal day in Bitcoin is $20 billion of trading. You know, we're now trading close to 50 billion a day of Bitcoin. Uh, because the ETFs are cash settled T plus one, I think there's, you know, a certain amount of uh, potential market games that are being done by you know, hedge funds and others where, you know, they can go in by ETFs and then the um, market closes on Friday. The ETF has to buy the Bitcoin on Monday. Bitcoin price is going to rally over the weekend. The uh, CFTC would allow futures that were commodity settled. Uh, I was speaking with a trader yesterday and he said, you know, Bitcoin would just run because people would just buy futures, sit on the Bitcoin, take delivery of it, right? Uh, and it would just run. So I think we're in for a very volatile market. You saw the swing. We get frequent calls from the institutional desks at exchanges just saying, hey, where can we find Bitcoin? Uh, it's certainly different. Um, I mean, last time when you think about it, having came, dip in price of Bitcoin, scramble, and then Bitcoin went on. It's kind of its progression upwards. The ETF has thrown everything kind of all the rules out, right? Because you have a vacuum cleaner that's just sucking up all the available Bitcoin right now. And between uh, the ETF and Michael Saylor, um, you know, if you look at how the market has responded, uh, I believe, uh, and you may know this better than I do, but you know, the AUM uh, held by Bitcoin ETFs right now is somewhere approaching 40-ish billion dollars, which is approaching 50% of the gold. It's higher. Yeah, I think I, I think it's actually, yesterday it was 53 and we're recording here on Friday, so it went up even slightly. It's probably in the 54, 55, including GBTC. So pretty, pretty wild. Yeah. Yeah, so gold is at 90-ish plus billion of AUM in their ETF. So here we are, took gold 20 years to get here. We're going to do this in three, four months, maybe. In our industry, it's about capital, capacity, meaning where you plug your miners in, and compute, which is the mining rigs. Uh, the mining rigs have been, it's been a glut market. You know, people are still able to buy miners. Uh, all of the big three miners, we all have orders with locked in pricing, locked in supply well into the future. Um, you know, capital uh, for the public miners has been easy to raise. Uh, the private miners have had a harder time still because they, you know, there's no equipment lending like there used to be in the in the raw, raw days. You could go to Galaxy, you could go to NIDIC, you could collateralize these machines. You can't do that anymore. Um, so that favors the people who have access to capital. Uh, but capacity is a constraint, right? So there's a lot of orders out there. People have a lot of um, machines on order and now they're scrambling to kind of find places to plug those in. So the actual hash rate increase will lag, but with the uh, Bitcoin at these levels, what you're seeing is, you know, many miners, not Marathon, but many miners are selling every Bitcoin they generate because they just don't know when the shoe's going to drop and because they don't have access to credit lines uh, or the public markets. You know, I think we're even seeing some old mining wallets. And there was a note somebody wrote, you know, a 10 year old wallet, you know. Yeah, 2010 yeah. wallet sent a thousand Bitcoins last Tuesday, right when it hit an all time high and sold effectively. Yeah, and, and you know, this week or the end of last week, I believe somebody reported that there had been eight transactions of over 500 Bitcoin each. You know, that's pretty large volumes considering uh, a normal day in Bitcoin is $20 billion of trading. You know, we're now trading close to 50 billion a day of Bitcoin. Um, yeah, there, I think there's a lot of, uh, because the ETFs are cash settled T plus one, I think there's, you know, a certain amount of uh, potential market games that are being done by you know, hedge funds and others where, you know, they can go in by ETFs and then the um, market closes on Friday. The ETF has to buy the Bitcoin on Monday. Bitcoin price is going to rally over the weekend. Right, then you short that Bitcoin. So it, it's, I think the market is learning about it. Um, if the uh, CFTC would allow futures that were commodity settled, uh, I was speaking with a trader yesterday and he said, you know, Bitcoin would just run because people would just buy futures, sit on the Bitcoin, take delivery of it, right? Uh, and it would just run. So I think we're in for a very volatile market. You saw the swing uh, the other day, you know, it was a temporary percent swing. I think we're going to see a lot of that as you get this kind of demand that needs to be fulfilled. And then all of a sudden, a bunch of coins come on the market. You're going to see a lot of OTC desks doing a lot of trading. The exchanges are still going to be tight. I know we get frequent calls from the 
institutional desks at exchanges just saying, hey, where can we find Bitcoin? Today, we dive into the world of Bitcoin, where the digital gold is making waves in the financial landscape. Bitcoin recently hit a new all-time high at $73,000, with the potential to surge higher. In one of his interviews, Fred spoke about mining Bitcoin and the outlook for Bitcoin market as more adoptions happen. As the halving approaches Bitcoin will still witness more rallying and miners will continue to sell Bitcoin to stabilize their cost line. Fred sees Bitcoin as digital gold as it's becoming increasingly evident that it will outperform gold in a short time. Its limited supply and decentralized nature make it a secure investment, similar to gold but in a digital form. Bitcoin scarcity, capped at 21 million coins, positions it as a hedge against inflation, echoing the characteristics of traditional gold. Fred emphasizes the importance of Bitcoin's inclusivity and adoption by sovereign countries' central banks. Bitcoin has the potential to work for everyone, providing financial inclusion to the unbanked and underbanked populations globally. Its borderless nature and accessibility democratize finance. Its current status shows a steady rise, with its value as a store of wealth gaining widespread recognition. Institutional adoption, regulatory developments, and growing public awareness contribute to its increasing prominence. He emphasized why Bitcoin is the perfect store of value, possessing ideal characteristics for wealth preservation. Make sure to stick around until the end of the video where Fred gives his outlook for Bitcoin and the next steps for buyers. If you want to stay up to date with Bitcoin and crypto, subscribe to our channel, it's free. Now, here is Fred with his powerful insights about Bitcoin. The market's running right now and um, fingers crossed when kind of the demand kind of abates will settle at a good level for everybody um, and then we will sally forth and see how the rest of the bull market goes a further continuance of this bull market coming based on on past cycles but as you said a lot of miners are still selling just in case right what if this yeah. is the top think about things uh you know january of last year bitcoin fifteen thousand. uh you know here we are sitting at bitcoin nudging seventy thousand. Uh, you know, 65,000 for a miner like us, you know, our SGNA and our operating costs get covered by because of the high price of Bitcoin by not a lot of Bitcoin. So our hodl keeps growing. You know, we're uh, over 16,000 Bitcoin now and we'll continue to run. You know, our Bitcoin hodl is over a billion dollars. You know, these numbers are kind of, you know, quite staggering, I think, as you look at it going forward. Um, and, you know, not to mention, you know, how the success that MicroStrategy has had, and, you know, with their market cap almost doubling recently. So it's, um, I, I think people are looking for all sorts of ways to have exposure to Bitcoin. There was a rotation out of the miners into ETFs uh, because of the halving coming up. And I think post the halving, people will go back and see the beta advantages of investing in the miners. And, you know, it'll be back to the kind of traditional model of one asset class, one of the assets playing off against the others. Um, people think that just because demand for the ETFs is so high that this is the new normal. Uh, I don't think that's the case. I think we're seeing pent up demand. I think we're seeing this transition. Um, we're only now seeing the early parts of these pension funds evaluating these assets. You're seeing BlackRock offering the ETF to their broader funds. You're seeing conservative, uh, you know, money managers like Merrill Lynch, Vanguard now saying, okay, for inbound risk you know, requests will sell you ETFs, but we're not going to go out and promote these instruments. Yeah, we have to get through kind of this period uh, of normalization. Uh, don't know how long it'll last, but when the demand does normalize, and it will at some point, uh, at that point, volatility will change and we may see a decrease. Doesn't seem like anybody's talking the fact about the fact that sovereign nations are now mining Bitcoin. Or that they always were. Yeah, the sovereigns are the single biggest competitors to the large public miners because they're really not interested in the cost to mine. They're looking to mine Bitcoin because they want to hold Bitcoin as a reserve asset. And if you hold Bitcoin as, as a reserve asset, you need to be able to ensure you can transact your Bitcoin. The only way to be able to ensure you can transact your Bitcoin is to mine it yourself. Uh, so, you know, there's a million Bitcoin plus or minus um, left to be mined between now and 2140. Uh, no sovereign nation is going to sink a billion dollars into infrastructure to, to go mine Bitcoin because they're thinking they're going to mine that million Bitcoin because, you know, their pro rata share will be a much smaller piece of that. So this is all about nation state security and treasury management 
And I think what we're going to see is um, you've seen a huge amount of gold being purchased by central banks, these nations, because they don't want to be dollarized uh, or they want to reduce their exposure to the dollar. You're going to continue to see that with Bitcoin now. People are going to, countries are beginning to, you know, allocate to Bitcoin uh, as a way to hold a certain amount of reserves. There's a lot of testing going on. You got to realize that with only 21 million Bitcoin and uh, the actual trading venues for Bitcoin are fairly limited still. You, know, you have Binance outside of the U.S., which is the biggest exchange. Um, you have Coinbase in the U.S., Gemini, etc. You know, if you're a sovereign and you happen to be sitting on 10,000 Bitcoin and you happen to need to go buy a battleship or something, these are large chunks of Bitcoin that may or may not go on and off the market. So I think people are a little wary. They're going to want to test. Uh, you've certainly started. I've certainly seen some stress testing going on on some of the ETFs. There were some hedge funds that were doing a high velocity tests, uh, 10x the volume, does it work or doesn't it? And it seemed to work fine. So I, I think this is a developing market. The demand is going to continue to develop, but it's going to be very volatile. The US government holds 1% of all the Bitcoin. <laughs> it, it's not a reserve asset. I don't think Senator Warren would admit that, certainly. Um, but the US government, because of what they uh, have essentially confiscated from uh, you know, criminal activities, sits on 1% of the available Bitcoin. You know, what's really amazing, you look at GBTC, you know, a lot of the selling currently in GBTC is still bankruptcy related sales and liquidations. Um, it's not people saying, oh my gosh, the fees are too high and I'm leaving. Uh, there's some of that. But um, I think generally speaking, um, you know, once those bankruptcy sales are completed, uh, you know, the net inflows number will grow potentially. Throughout his discussion, Fred emphasizes the prospect of Bitcoin and that more adoptions will happen as sovereign nations and central banks begin to adopt Bitcoin. Bitcoin provides decentralization, security, control, ownership, and long-term storage of wealth. He also emphasized the capital intensity of mining Bitcoin. The fact that miners will continue selling Bitcoin, even as the supply approaches its cap of 21 million, highlights the ongoing economic activity within the Bitcoin ecosystem. Understanding these aspects of Bitcoin can indeed empower individuals to make more informed investment decisions and develop better financial strategies. Investors need to conduct thorough research and assess their risk tolerance before investing in Bitcoin or any other asset. If you enjoy financial content, please subscribe to our channel, like, comment and share the video. Anyway, guys, I hope you all enjoyed today's video and that it provided you with some value. I will see you all on the next one, and as always, all the best.